Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. House of the Dragon Season 2 has been filming new episodes, and there were a couple new scenes they released with a bunch of Easter eggs and references to the books, so we'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, I'll be doing videos for all the episodes, just like Season 1, just like the original Game of Thrones series. They even just released a teaser trailer for the next Game of Thrones spinoff, so I'll address that at the end of the video, too. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. There are two big scenes they just released. They're from totally different episodes, so I'll start with the dragon-based one first. One of the big differences in Season 2 versus Season 1 is that while we did get way more large dragons than in the original Game of Thrones series right off the bat, during Season 2, because the actual Targaryen Civil War begins, the Dance of the Dragons starts, we'll start to see way more dragon battles in the sky. Red hot dragon on dragon action. They only briefly touched on stuff like that in the original series. Like the closest we got to dragon battles was in Game of Thrones Season 8 during the Long Night episode when you have the Night King fighting Jon Snow and Daenerys on Dragonback for a hot second using the white version of Viserion that he'd raised from the dead. But all those scenes happened in the blackness of night. Like it was so dark that people complained they couldn't see anything that happened during that episode with clouds obscuring a lot of the action. And to boot, it was super quick before they hit the ground. So you could barely see any actual dragon versus dragon fighting. By House of the Dragon Season 2, we start to see the greens versus the blacks on their dragons fighting in broad daylight. Special effects have just risen to the level where they can start to pull that off without having to hide it or cut around a lot of the action. They got there briefly at the end of Season 1 if you consider Aemond and Vagar killing Lucerus while he was on his dragon Arax, R.I.P. One of the scenes they released is actually related to what happened at the end of Season 1. This first scene, though, is from the aftermath of the Battle of Rook's Rest. It's meant to be later in the season around Episode 6 or Episode 7. And remember, there are only going to be 8 episodes in Season 2, which does kind of suck that they're cutting it short. I'll explain why they did that, because part of the reason for doing that is because of what happens with the Battle of Rook's Rest. During the scene, you see Aegon II's parade pushing a cart through the streets of King's Landing with the small folk gathered around cheering like they're treating it like a big victory. These are Aegon's new banners. He's part of Alicent's Greens. That's why the banners are green with gold Targaryen sigils. And it's meant to be a victory parade. Aegon is returning victorious in his battle against Rhaenyra's side because the battle itself, Rook's Rest, is a big victory for the Greens. Zoom and enhance on the banners too. A lot of people have asked about this. You notice that the dragon sigils on it only have two legs instead of the traditional four-legged dragons on the red and black Targaryen sigils from Season 1. Ryan Condal, the showrunner, said that he wanted to explain why the Targaryen sigil changed over their history from four-legged dragon sigils to two legs during the time of Daenerys in the original Game of Thrones series, much later in the timeline. And it's meant to pay off a long-running fan question from the original series. On the original series around Season 6 and Season 7, Daenerys started using their traditional Targaryen banners again with four legs. But if you look at a lot of the merch in way before season one premiered, all the Targaryen banners, all their sigils had two legs on them. So a lot of people are like, why did they switch from two legs to four legs all of a sudden? They never really explained this during the original series. The practical reason is because they just like the four legged look better. Ryan Condal is doing a bit of a Dave Filoni in the Star Wars universe. Dave Filoni does this all the time where like he'll retcon stuff to make it seem cooler in retrospect. Like, no, we planned it this way the whole time. And this is the reason why. Because after Robert's Rebellion, all the Targaryen banners and sigils or symbols had either been hidden or burned. So later in the timeline, you started to see two-legged banners popping up and some past examples left over from when Aegon was briefly king with two-legged banners. Earlier in the timeline, during House of the Dragon, when Aegon II becomes king and makes his own green and gold banners, they wanted to differentiate them from Rhaenyra's traditional Targaryen banners, and that's why they have two legs. One of the funny things about Daemon and Rhaenyra is that they're meant to be old school traditionalist Targaryens. Like they call them old school Targaryens. Like they had their wedding in the old Valyrian traditions. So they adhere to the classic old traditions. They made all those snide comments and criticisms of Alicent when she put all the banners of the Faith of the Seven around replacing Targaryen sigils in the Red Keep. I would say it's nice to be home, but I scarcely recognize it. Hmm. Rhaenyra sees a giant seven-pointed star in the main hallway. Gordy, if you ask me. I'm sure once they see Aegon's gold banners with the two-legged dragons, Damon and Rhaenyra will also make some other snide comments like, how dare you put two-legged dragons on there? That's so inaccurate. 
He also said when they were making House of the Dragon, they wanted to honor what Daenerys did when she was picking it when she was coming to power with the four legged banners by saying that that had always been the Targaryen tradition to have four legged banners. The real answer, though, is that the Game of Thrones people at HBO just changed their minds between the beginning of the season and later in season six and season seven. Like, you know what? We think that four legs is better. But to address the dead dragon in the room, on the cart there, parading the dead dragon through the city, zooming in hands, you can see the spikes sticking out of the head. It's Melee's Rainy's dragon, R.I.P. The traitor dragon, Melee's! During the Battle of Rook's Rest, she fights Aegon and his dragon Sunfire in the sky, and even though they both die, R.I.P., they wound Aegon so badly that he winds up wishing that he died, like dying would have been a mercy. And it's meant to pay off Helena Targaryen's dragon dream from season one, where she says the last ring has no legs. That was a dragon dream about Aegon II losing the ability to walk. The last ring has no legs at all. Rhaenys basically winds up breaking his back. Rook's Rest is the seat of House Staunton here, who declared for Rhaenyra. It's on the edge of Blackwater Bay near Dragonstone. But like I said, it's meant to be a big victory for the Greens, and part of the reason why they're cutting Season 2 shorter is because they want to end the season in the aftermath of the Battle of Rook's Rest with a victory for the Greens, as a way to bookend the major WTF moment victory that Rhaenyra's side has at the beginning of the season. So it's one of those situations during the season where they start with a victory for the Blacks, but a big loss for the Blacks. So like both sides, the Greens and the Blacks, win some and they both lose some during the season. And the other major scene that they released that they were filming is the aftermath of that mega WTF victory for the Blacks at the beginning of the season. Although I wouldn't call it a victory, it's more of like a scorched earth, really bad WTF kind of victory. Because it's all about blood and cheese. And even Rhaenyra herself has absolutely nothing to do with it. In the scene, you see Alicent and Helena Targaryen riding in a cart with a funeral procession through the city with a casket on this cart. And it's meant to be a very sad scene in contrast to the victory parade, which happens at the end of the season that I just talked about. In the funeral scene, there's a town crier yelling out, Behold the works of Rhaenyra the Cruel, blaming Rhaenyra for the death of Helena and Aegon's oldest son, Prince Jaehaerys. He'd been named after their great-grandfather, King Jaehaerys. Them calling Rhaenyra the Cruel is meant to be a book reference during her storyline. The people of King's Landing start to refer to her as Magor with tits. Magor had been called Magor the Cruel. So the Greens are blaming Rhaenyra for the death of Aegon and Helena's son. But what really happened is that Daemon was the one that pulled this off. He was responsible for everything. And it was meant to be revenge for the death of Lucerys at the end of season one. Originally, Damon's plan was to have Myseria, acting on his behalf, hire assassins to kill one of Aegon's children in revenge for the death of Lucerys, declaring an eye for an eye, a son for a son, another reference to Aemon's one eye. Damon didn't care which son Myseria wound up killing. Myseria hires blood and cheese. They sneak into the Red Keep and force Helena to choose which of her children they would kill. So it winds up being this really brutal moment, really WTF, like I said. And even Rhaenyra is horrified when she finds out what Damon did. Like, how dare you go above my head to do something like this? I never authorized you to do this. That was a big thing during season one with her trying to prevent Damon from going off the chain. Like, just chill for a second. We don't want to burn the kingdom to the ground. And Damon almost winds up choking her out because she doesn't want to go immediately to war. Even though she is bitter about the death of Lucerys, a big theme during season one, and it continues through the entire conflict, like all the seasons, is that both Alice and Rhaenyra never wanted to have a war. But all the people around them, like the Green Council on Alice's side, Rhaenyra's Black Council on her side, all those people go way overboard, pushing things further and further out of control, which leads to the near utter destruction like scorched earth policy in King's Landing. Which is something Rhaenyra references during season one where she says she doesn't want to rule over the ashes. They also ironically wind up having Daenerys say something similar on the original Game of Thrones series later in the timeline. And just like later in the timeline with Daenerys, it leads to a pretty much scorched earth policy around King's Landing. That's why things end badly for both sides, even though eventually there is an ultimate victor. The whole idea during the series is in the Dance of the Dragons, even though there has to be at least one victor at some point, both sides wind up losing, really. The only thing that could tear down the House of the Dragon was itself. 
In related Game of Thrones news, they just announced the Tales of Dunkin' Eggs spinoff series. Right now, they're just calling it The Hedge Knight. They'll have some other title once it eventually makes it to episodes. But they did confirm that it will get a full order of episodes. It's going to run a little bit shorter than the normal 10-episode run, though. They just released a teaser trailer for that. I did a much bigger video for it, so I'll link it at the end of this. But it will be a couple more years before it makes it to air. It's meant to be the beginning of like the many, many spinoffs and prequels they're doing for Game of Thrones. Eventually, we'll see all of them. It's just that the Hedge Knight one will be the next one we see after House of the Dragon, and they might run concurrently for a season or two. Click here to watch the trailer for that, my full video, and click here for all my House of the Dragon season two videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.